Hello students and parents welcome back to my channel with another science tutorial video today You all know that I already made a video on combustion chapter and another video on combustion question and answer discussion you can search in my channel or you can watch from my in screen suggested video In my today's video I am going to explain you the second part of that combustion chapter that is flame and fuel so let's get started If you light the wick of a candle with a burning matchstick it burns with a flame. But how is the flame produced? When a candle is lit the wax around the wick melts. This wax rises up through the wick and vaporizes. If you look carefully you can see the wax melting and going up the wick. The vapors burn to produce the flame. Thus the flame is produced by the combustion of wax vapors in oxygen. A flame has four different zones. First one zone of non-combustion, the dark zone. Second one zone of incomplete combustion, the luminous zone. Third one the zone of complete combustion, the non-luminous zone. Fourth one is the blue zone. Non combustion zone or dark zone is seen around the wick. It is the innermost zone and contains unhard wax vapors. Combustion does not take place here as there is no air supply. It is the least hot part of the flame. In luminous zone, the wax vapors do not burn completely as the supply of air is inadequate for complete combustion. The wax breaks up into carbon and hydrogen. The unburned carbon particles glow and impart a pale yellow color to the flame. This is the middle part of the flame and is moderately hot. The non-luminous zone is the outermost and hottest region of the flame since adequate air is available there is complete combustion of carbon and hydrogen to form carbon dioxide and water vapor. Blue zone lies at the bottom of the flame. The blue color is due to the burning of carbon monoxide produced due to the incomplete combustion of carbon particles. Now let's discuss what is fuel. Combustible materials such as wood, coal, gas or oil which are burned to produce heat or power are known as fuels. Fuels can be solids, liquids or gases. Solid fuels are easy to store but difficult to use. Gaseous fuels are difficult to store. They have to be compressed at high pressure and stored in sealed cylinder or tankers. These can be dangerous if a leak develops because the fuel can spread very fast. However, gaseous fuels are easy to use. Liquid fuels can be stored easily and are easy to use. Various types of fuels are available to be used in boilers, furnaces and other combustion equipments. The selection of the right type of fuel depends on various factors such as availability, storage, handling, pollution and cost of fuel. The amount of heat liberated when a unit mass of a fuel is burned gives us a measure of the efficiency of a fuel. This is referred to as the calorific value of the fuel. Calorific value of a fuel can be defined as the amount of heat liberated when 1 kg of the fuel is completely burned in sufficient supply of oxygen. The higher the calorific value, the better is the fuel. The SI unit of calorific value is joule per kilogram. However, the unit kilojoule per kilogram is commonly used. So, I hope my today's video will become helpful for your study. Stay tuned to my channel and definitely follow my all videos to get good marks in mathematics and science. Bye bye.